I still don't feel like I made it. Did I make it? Yeah, I think I'm famous. Am I famous? Before Rico Nasty would drop tracks like Hey Arnold, iCarly, Poppin' and Smack a Bitch, which now has over 15 million views on YouTube. Before Rico Nasty would garner over 270k followers on Twitter, close to 240k subscribers on YouTube with over 44 million views combined, and close to 720k followers on Instagram at the time of this recording. Before she would collab with Doja Cat, Lil Yachty, Blockboy JB, Amine, Kenny Beats, and more. Before she would capture the music industry's ear with her unique style of aggressive punk inspired Hip -hop. I feel like the, the worst pain people feel usually just builds them to be like the strongest type of people. Rico Nasty has overcome a lot in her lifetime, more than most people could possibly imagine. From having her dad go to prison and getting expelled from school, to having a child of her own at a young age while dealing with the tragic loss of her child's father. But through it all, Rico has become persistence personified and has worked to become one of the most talked about new rappers in the game because of her bars, unique live shows, her punk infused vocals over trap beats, and of course, her energy. Rico told Stereo Gum in an interview, I definitely exude big dick energy. I didn't come here to be one of y'all. I didn't come here to stay in a lane. I came here and I'm lit. She's been able to reach heights that few ever attain and did it all by herself. Well, alongside her dog. Can you guess what her dog's name is? Stick around until the end of the video to find out. What's going on good people in the comment section? I hope you're having one heck of a day. My name is Jeremy Hecht here for you today on Before They Were Famous, taking you through the journey of Rico Nasty from childhood to fame. If you're new here and you have no idea who this random kid talking is and why his ears are so small, yeah, I know it's gonna be hard to unsee. Well, I'm the LA host for this channel and I'm here to help Michael out with some content. In my last two videos, we covered City Girls and Megan Thee Stallion and you guys requested this one. I was actually talking to Rico over email a couple months back and she was excited to be on the show. So Rico, if you're watching, I hope you do your story justice because it's an incredible one. The motto is get better with every video, so let me know how I did and who to cover next in the comments down below. Keep sending in your requests in the comments. Now, let's get into the show. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! If you want to know Rico's story, well, once upon a time, Rico made moves not doing the same thing as her competition. And now she's popping and counting up money because she's mad rich. And even though she's famous, I know she won't change, but let's back up. Did you get all those song titles? Rico Nasty was born Maria Cecilio Simone Kelly, I hope I pronounced that right, on May 7, 1997 in Brooklyn, New York. But when she was very young, she moved to the small town of Largo, Maryland. She told Fader, Largo has nice homes and black owned businesses, but it gets rough real fast. From one street to the next, it can change. Rico's mom works for the government in a cybersecurity sector, and her father was actually a rapper himself named Beware, and even went on tour with Jadakiss at one point. Rico says of her father's lyrical ability, my f***ing dad is like the best rapper alive. How I got on the radio in my hometown actually, like my dad is friends with him and he remembers when I was a little baby, used to ride around in a radio truck. So music has always been a part of my life. Her dad doesn't release music anymore, but continues to write to ease his mind. Unfortunately, her dad went to jail for a year when she was just 15 and was then sent back for an additional two years, but not before he inspired Rico to perform around the house. When she was five years old, she would freestyle a little bit and she would even get dressed up for her parents and put on little mini shows to Spice Girls, Mariah Carey and Britney Spears. I used to say, yo, it's MC in the place to be and I'm rocking the mic with my dad. That's a Initially, it was her mom that told her to perform poetry, but the poems inspired a love for words. So Rico continued to learn more about poetry and writing. She spent some time in Virginia, but later moved with her mother to the Palmer Park area. She told Complex, it was almost like you felt trapped because the world is so big. And when you're raised in the same place, it's like you see everybody else doing the same shit. And you want to level up and shit, but everyone else around you ain't leveling up. When she was seven years old, she performed in her school talent show doing a spoken word performance of a Langston Hughes poem. And although she lost in the competition, it inspired her to want to become a famous rapper one day. Due to a drop in her grades, her mom sent her off to a boarding school in Baltimore for high achieving disenfranchised students, where she attended the sixth grade. She would bus home every weekend to spend time with her family, but that same year her parents divorced. Rico had trouble dealing with the transition period into a new school as well as her parents split, which led her to selling weed, skipping school, and eventually she was expelled from boarding school after being caught smoking weed at a campus bus stop. Rico says that she didn't even know how to use a lighter at the time and not to snitch, but the kid who invited her outside to smoke 
Well, his name was Martinez. And that's not the only incident of trouble that Rico got in. I had this one teacher. I just, I don't know what she said to me. I just know I was having a bad day. And I remember I really like trashed her class. Like I low key like threw shit. Hey, at least she apologized and now that teacher has a whole bunch of clothes. Sorry, Miss Robinson. Robinson. Not sorry. And while she wasn't very focused on most of her classes, Rico loved art class, and she would even skip some of her other classes just to sit in on other art classes. She was so talented with the paintbrush that she was even able to become a TA in art class. Rico returned home to attend Charles Flowers High School, but didn't feel like she fit into the already formed groups at the school, so she became somewhat of a loner. Some of the kids held resentment towards her for leaving to go to private school, and she says she even got bullied for being different. I was like weird on purpose, I wanted to be an outcast. If I knew all this shit was going to be a trend, bro, let's get hella dark. If being weird was cool back then, I would have never had to get these tattoos, I would have never tried to hurt myself, I was so hard on myself on everything. My hair is too short, my hair is too big, I'm too fat, I went through a lot of issues. But she says that if she didn't go through all of that, then she wouldn't be where she's at today. One of the few people who she connected with though was her mom's best friend's daughter named Stephanie who showed her anime including Fruits Baskets, Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, and Hello Kitty. She also started listening to metal and emo bands like Slipknot and dressing differently from her peers. She was influenced by listening to bands like Led Zeppelin, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Sex Pistols, Death Cab for Cutie, Pink Floyd, Paramore, and wanted to learn more about all of her favorite artists. It just made me want to learn more about music which led me to being a musician. And the punk sound can definitely be heard in her music. She also says that she was influenced by Kanye West, Bob Marley, Joan Jett, and DMV artist Big Flock. And during some of her darkest periods, she was listening to The Smiths. As for her dream collabs, she said it would either be Rihanna or Juice World. But the first concert she ever attended was a Chris Brown show when she was 10 years old. And she says a young Christopher actually pointed at her. It was in high school that she would start spitting bars though. And the first rap song she ever wrote was actually a diss song. A little bald head bitch. <laughs> I didn't know. Nah, she really was bald headed. She really blew the shit out of me. She said I was piss complexion because I'm yellow bone. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the track actually almost got Rico suspended from school. The school administration tried to make her take the song off the internet, but she defended it with her freedom of speech, good call. The idea of music came to her in the 10th grade when she was listening to a bunch of different types of music, including what she describes as chill wave songs with no lyrics. So she ended up rapping over those songs to start. She released her first mixtape called Summer's Eve in the 11th grade, and that was also the first music that Rico's father heard of hers. He was recently released from jail after close to a two year stay behind bars. She recalls he started crying while listening to her rap and she started crying watching him get emotional. He told her, I can't believe while I was gone this wasn't something that I had to instill in you. It was something that you just had. I didn't have to coach you, I didn't have to find you a studio, you just had the hunger to go and record like any artist. My parents have only been to one show each and they weren't there at the same time. It was like my dad went to one show, then two months later my mom went to one show. In terms of her mom, she wasn't happy about me rapping. She was just like, um, alright, well look, you can't be a corny ass bitch. But when she finally heard the mixtape, she actually really liked it. The only thing she told Rico was that she had to curse less. Her first ever show was actually organized by her mom, but Rico's mom told her that she had to promote the show herself, and after not taking the promoting gig seriously, Rico showed up to the venue, and there were only 15 people there, and they were all her family. But when I was up there and I was performing, I didn't care that it was just my family. I was like, fuck it, like, I once did a performance in front of five people and four of them were my family, so I know how you feel. She decided that her next show would not be like that. She went home the next morning, started writing, feeling more motivated than ever. Her next show that she threw herself was sold out. At first, her parents didn't believe that she could accomplish the goals she set out to reach, but once she started climbing higher and higher, and as she said, once God started working for her, her parents finally believed in her vision. Rika was taking music more seriously and gaining some support, but right after graduating from high school at the age of 18, Rico had her first child, Cameron. Tragically, the baby's father died before he ever knew Rico was pregnant. Her first tattoo was even in honor of him, replicating a crescent moon and stars that he had. She placed a symbol behind her right earlobe. Rico talks about him on the song Brandon, and in an interview with Stereo Gum, she says, My boyfriend who passed, we used to sleep together and I would be behind him, and he'd have that tattoo. It's just everlasting love to me. 
Nothing made me happier than me waking up in his house and his mother cooking breakfast, looking at my phone with text messages of my mom telling me, bring your ass home. Nothing's more reminiscent of those times. After he passed away, understandably, Rico fell into a state of depression and started skipping school. She didn't know what to do with herself and she almost didn't end up graduating. She even stopped making music at one point. I was sad because all the people who used to tell me to dream big started telling me to settle. Eventually, after graduation, she took a job as a receptionist at a hospital, hoping to gain experience in the field with the goal of later becoming a pediatrician. But she told Noisy that being exposed to so much death and illness made her rethink her life's purpose. That question gave her the inspiration she needed to pick back up her pen. When her son was around 10 months old, she started rapping again. She says if she wasn't rapping that she would probably be feeding the dolphins at the aquarium. When she was 19, she started smoking a lot more and says it helps with her creativity. She knew that she needed to provide for her family and felt that rap was her best chance to do so. Alongside her manager, Malik Fox, they released her single, I Carly in 2016 and the song, Hey Arnold, a few months later. I Carly started to buzz and here's an old tweet I found of Rico's where she has 531 followers on SoundCloud when the song reached 10.5K plays within a week. Malik is also Rico's boyfriend and a father figure to her child. After DMing her on Twitter, on their first date, Malik felt Cameron's kicking in Rico's belly. I feel like any woman in a girl relationship, you just feel like you be flourishing and shit. Like he just be loving you so hard. You just be wanting to like live your best life. She went hard with music, dropping two tapes in 2016 called The Rico Story and Sugar Trap, which helped push her name into the mainstream public. But it was her song, Hey Arnold, that caught the attention of Lil Yachty, who hopped on the remix. The track was blowing up and she says the two are now good friends and are so proud of each other's accomplishments. In 2017, she released the Tales of Taco Bella EP, inspired by one of her few alter egos. Rico expresses her complicated self through a few alter egos. There's the raging Trap Levine, and her more vulnerable and softer side is the singer Taco Bella. She says it wasn't until she created the name that she started incorporating more melodic sounds into her music. She told Complex that her rap moniker came from Instagram, she used to wear a chain that said Puerto Rico on it to represent her ethnicity. And one day, an unnamed dude who actually deserves a lot of credit told her she smelled bad and passed by her yelling, Rico Nasty, on the bus home from school. And that same day, she changed her Instagram name to Rico Nasty, and the rest is history. She thought she would change her name before fame, but it all happened so fast that she didn't have time. But in June of 2017, she would reach new heights with her song Poppin', which garnered over 4 million views on YouTube and landed in the lap of Issa Rae, who placed the song on season two of her HBO smash show, Insecure. She told Complex, like everything else, I have to believe it when I see it. I was like, okay, I'm sure it's gonna be on there. Like, what the fuck ever. And then sure enough, it was on there. She later met Issa, who was actually really excited to meet her too, telling Stereo Gum, that was like two levels underneath Michelle Obama saying hi to me. Like. When we're talking black female role models, she's got her own show that's called Insecure and it's about embracing your sexuality as a black woman. The song was a part of her mixtape Sugar Trap 2, which also included Key Lime OG, which is Rico's son Cam's favorite song. The tape received critical acclaim with Rolling Stone placing it on their best rap albums of 2017 list. In June of 2018, Rico signed a deal with Atlantic Records and released her label debut mixtape, Nasty. She says with her first check, she bought her kid a bunch of toys from Toys R Us. She's a good mom. She says since her success, she's gotten lonelier and doesn't have many friends in the rap game. I don't have enough time for friends. It's crazy because I love friends, but I, time for people friends. be texting me and I'd be like, hi, bye. But to help her loneliness, she recently got a dog named Fish. Wait, what? I be going through some lonely shit. I be yeah. needing something to cuddle. And there's the answer to your question from the beginning of the video. Rico told LA Weekly that she wants her fans to take from her music. I want them to gain strength and understand that it doesn't matter what you go through. It's all about what you do with those experiences and how you go forward in life. But as for the rest of the story, well, you know it because this is Before They Were Famous. As always, I'm Jeremy Hecht and be sure to let us know in the comments down below who you want us to cover next and we'll try to get through all of those videos for you. Shout out to Rico Nasty, I'm a huge fan. So if you're watching this, continued success to you. Dream good, live better. I hope you guys have one heck of a day and I'll see you in the next video.